de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast where we talk about Latino everything. Yep, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode. If you have not subscribed to the channel on YouTube or follow on the audio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else, go ahead and do so. We truly appreciate it. We're going to repeat it because it does help. Science says, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that. I, mean, I didn't Google that because Google had failed me on the last episode, so I'm not going to do that. However, it does help whenever you subscribe, whenever you interact with us. And we would love to get feedback from you to expand whatever it is that we are doing. Uh, I love the fact that we get to interview people within our area right now. And then you get to see what they're doing. And uh, they're Latinos. And even though I'm open to having somebody that's not a Latino, just for the same thing of getting their perspective as far as what they see whenever they interact with us. What a misconception that they might have about us. And kind of sort of just, you know, just sit down with people, with people at the end of the day, whatever society or whoever is trying to do, separate, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're just one. I said a long time ago that if like some kind of alien space force came to invade us, we quickly to come together as one uh, humanity to try to defend ourselves. If they came in, uh, they, were, they didn't have the best intention for us. So that's one thing. OK, so again, subscribe to the YouTube. If you. Liking the merch, we have different kind of merchandise. Go to the website. It's always in the description. However, it is theglobalatinfactor.com, theglobalatinfactor.com. You'll find the recent episodes. You'll find the store. And you'll get your stuff sent by Amazon. They print all this beautiful stuff out. So go get your shirt. We have different designs. And you'll be supporting the show, the podcast. And we appreciate it. We're about a year and a half in. And uh, we still got more to go, and we appreciate you very much. Today, today is going to be a little bit of a different episode because uh, we pre-record. However, pre-record the episode. However, the uh, 26th of September, I had an appointment to take an oath to become a U.S. citizen. And when, and I want to talk to you about that. Um, so I wasn't really going to make a anything about it i wasn't so i wasn't going to really talk about it or anything like that i, I did post something about it because i think it is a very significant accomplishment especially being a veteran that's what people get they get thrown off by that fact that i, I was able to serve but at the same time i wasn't uh, a, a citizen of the u.s but i'm going to go through that and the reason why i wanted to post something is because um, i see one of my cousins uh, post something that it was motivational. I'm like, you know, he is my cousin, so of course I would, I wouldn't expect it, but it, it's kind of cool that he sees that. At the same time, I see that that my story might be able to inspire somebody uh, that maybe doesn't understand, maybe doesn't see the importance, maybe has a dream of one day becoming a, a U.S. citizen because it, it is a big deal, whether we want it or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Briefly cover my journey as far as what entail me becoming a citizen. I, I am also going to have in the future an actual law firm come and talk about that process and also some immigration. Literally going to get an expert to talk about the subject matter because I'm not an expert. Google fails me sometimes, so I'm not going to be the one that uh, you know portrays myself to be an expert in the matter because I'm not. However, I am going to get a firm to come and talk to, to us about certain things. So I'm just going to give you my perspective, my story as far as what it entails. I'm going to go way, way back, but not too too far back. I'm not going to go uh, the morning that I was born at 5 a.m. and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not. But I am going to talk about uh, this is what I'm going to be calling my uh, American journey and my journey to my American dream because, you know, you ultimately need the American dream uh, citizenship, not necessarily, but, you know, it's part of, I guess you could say the package of completing the American dream that everybody sees on TV, everybody talks about. So first, uh, I was born in Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I uh, got here to the United States when I was 11 years old. We crossed illegally. Um, I'm not going to go into too much into detail, but we had to cross the border Cross the the river, um, go under go under a fence, run, 
and hide in a hotel and then, you know, make our way over here. Now, the journey was my grandpa had to, my mom and my dad were already here. Um, so, you know, it was only right that we were separated at that time. I really didn't, I was, I was 11 years old. I was naive. I didn't really know what's going on. You know, at that time, we just focused on going to school and, you know, just doing good in school, playing with your, your, your kid. You're a kid. You know, especially being where I'm from, very small town, very naive about everything there is. A lot of the things that I've seen were on TV. So that's the time that I, I got to see outside of where I was from. Uh, so finally, my grandpa drove us to the border. And again, we crossed over illegally. We got here and we, w we attended school and we began to go into school. And this is going to sound ignorant as hell. This is going to sound real ignorant. But... When I first got here to the United States, first, I only knew Spanish. Well, the first time I ever seen somebody that was redhead and freckles, first time I ever seen an African-American in my entire life, except for on TV. And I was so naive that I asked whoever was helping me to uh, let me know if I was asking, do they all know Spanish? Like, <laughs> they're not going to know Spanish if we're in the U.S. But it was just my ignorance and my not being naive and not knowing much about the world. So I went went and did that and, you know, just shocked about everything that was going on. Everything where I'm from, is a, again, it's a small little town. A lot of the times we have to walk. We used to ride horses to get to certain places. Uh, we had to take taxis to go. If we needed to go to get groceries or anything, we had to walk miles to get that. To go to school, we needed to walk. So all that was we had everybody had cars here it was a way different story so we went to school um you know just finally kind of sort of worked the fact that i wasn't in my little town anymore and then i realized this is a different world so the culture shock itself of how the u.s works compared to where we from at the same time uh again the innocence the ignorance of not knowing really um uh, being in a, a totally new world and then I noticed one time when I was I went to school everything, but I did notice whenever we used to have our, our social, we did say not permitted to work. So that was part of the part of the things that we had to that kind of told you that you're not you're not here to work. You're not able to not really fear, but uncertainty that you're not really here. Oh, they're, you're not being welcome at this time. You're not able to function function like everybody else. Even as a young age, I, I realized and I read that verbiage that it said that. I'm like, okay, so what's going to happen when I'm ready to work? Uh, but I was still a kid. And then eventually, we, uh, my dad was a, was a resident. He's the one that applied for, for us. And he first of all, the process of applying for from a resident uh, to get your family, immediate family, uh, there's a few requirements. I don't know 100% of everything. I know that you have to, you know, we're his kids and, and my mom too, so his wife. But I know you have to pay a lot of money. I know you have to pay a lot of money to an attorney to file all the paperwork and everything because uh, if you don't know the language, my, my dad didn't know the language, um, then you're not going to know really what to do. So you're going to have to seek somebody. He found an attorney and he was able to file the paperwork. And once all the paperwork start filing, then, of course, you have to uh, pay a fine, too, because you crossed illegally. That's part of the process. That's how I remember because, you know, you got here without permission and you have to take care of it. So my dad and my mom put their money together and did all that. And finally, uh, years, we had to go to physicals. We had to go get prints. We had to go, you know, get all the stuff done, shots. All kinds of stuff that we had to do. So I remember when I was younger, going appointment after different appointments. And, of course, we were kids. We would just ride around. But I remember my dad and my mom driving us to those places to, to get the print, fingerprints done, biometrics, to get uh, shots and to get physicals and everything and whatever questions that they asked. Uh, so we, we had to answer all that. And then finally we did become resident, and I was able to work and start my earning a wage. Uh, my first job was at <laughs> CeCe's Pizza. I was a, I was a dishwasher, a busboy dishwasher, but that's just, an, that's another story. So I was able to legally finally be, uh, work and earn a wage and start um, filing my taxes and, and all that, and, you know, start functioning. And then 
after that, I joined the military. So there's a lot of confusion about that part. Like if you are a resident of the United States, a permanent resident of the United States, you are able to serve in the military. You have to minimum be a resident of the United States to to do that. Now, I don't know if they're allowing dreamers. I, I really not too informed about that. But I know for sure you have to be a resident of the United States to be able to. So that's how I was able to join. Um, I was driving around in my car, getting a, I had a scholarship package because I was getting ready to go to school. I was 19 years old. I had my little package with me on my car, driving to my house and did a U-turn, went to the uh, National Guard, talked to the man. I told him, no, I just want to go for many years because I know... Uh, my family, my mom, my dad wasn't going to be able to put me to school, so I had to figure some way to do so. And I figured the easiest way to do was to go to the military, so I did. And, of course, again, you are able to join the military if you're a permanent resident. So I did all that, did the military thing, um, Got went to uh, serve in Iraq for a year. A year and it was a year. It was a, a whole year. And then... I got out of the military, uh, honorably discharged, and uh, went into the real world. At that time, so whenever they say you're a permanent resident, that doesn't mean you can't lose your residency, right? There's things that happen that you have to still act accordingly. You can't be reckless. You can't be committing crimes. You can't be doing all this stuff because it could cost you your residency. There's stories about veterans that, that went and served for this country that, you know, for whatever reason, they, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I did a lot of self-inflicting things that I didn't need to do. I don't know why I was acting reckless. I don't know if maybe because of the deployment of the things that I seen when I came back, I was feeling like I needed to live and certain, certain parts of that meant for me to party. And of course, I'm young adult, so that included alcohol. And I, I, I did some dumb stuff. I put myself in a, a very bad predicaments that I got myself in trouble and I, I had to pay a lot of fines uh, related with alcohol and you know I started doing more self-help but I'm not gonna blame it on nobody it was my it was my responsibility I self-inflict whatever the case what it was uh, whatever it was it was I was doing it myself and I was able to get out of it but at the same time I was putting my permanent resident in jeopardy because I kept getting in trouble because of that so if you are a permanent resident, you can't lose that. Just because it says permanent, it doesn't mean that it is permanent. So you have to really protect that. And after the time of the criteria, the time that you became a resident, that you can apply for a citizenship, I highly recommend to do so. Uh, I would 100% recommend to start doing that because, again, it's it's really not permanent. It's really not permanent. And you don't know what the government can do at times that all of a sudden decide to take that away. Um, the previous administration, not really too much discussion about it, but there's a few things that they wanted kind of sort of talked about or maybe the media was talking about it, uh, even though they were permanent permanent residents here. So, again, if you meet the criteria of the time that you've been here resident and you have done the things that you needed to do, you acted in good manner and good character, then please go ahead and apply for a citizenship uh, Get together the money that you need to because you have to pay a fine for that if you're able to do it yourself. If not, seek uh, a law firm that's able to help you with the process so you can go ahead and become, uh, you know, a citizen. So I'm going to talk about that. So at that, so one of the times, so I used to travel. I used, I, I go sometimes out of the country, and it, every time I went out of the country, I used to. They always used to pull me to the side and then check. And I always thought it was random, maybe just something with me, maybe my looks, I don't know what. And then by the third time that I went out of the country that did that, I asked one of the officers, hey, well, why does this keep happening? Y'all keep pulling me over to the side. Like, oh, we're checking your record to make sure that you you don't have anything new. Because if we have anything new, then we're going to know and you're going to probably not going to let you in. You're going to be in trouble. So I told him, how do I fix that? Do I need to uh, get my citizenship? And then he's like, well, well, yeah, that would be the only way. And that started turning the gears. Not to mention, I was a little bit of fear that because I had gotten in trouble, I needed to allow some time to pass before I'm able to file 
for my citizenship. So those things combined, finally, I had enough. I felt like it was enough time. I started reaching out. And uh, luckily, my brother uh, works for an attorney that, that does this. And I was able to get with them and, you know, pay whatever I needed to do and do whatever I needed to do to begin my process. Uh, I've I seen somebody that somebody had told me that if you're a veteran, that they are allowed to waive. To my understanding, that wasn't an option, not even on the application we filled out, that you are able to do that. Even though I did present my, they call you, your release forms in the military, the Army at least, is the DD-214s. And I don't recall anywhere that we've seen that the fee was able to be waived if you're a veteran. Uh, but I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you still have to pay as a veteran for filing for a, a citizenship. So I got with the attorney. I told him my situation. I told him I got in trouble. It's been some time. Uh, I think that I, I should be good. And I want to go ahead and begin the process. They began to put a package together for me. I had to get and call out the places that I got in trouble, get as much showing that I took care of that. And then I had to show a good moral character. Uh, the package included uh, was called, I believe it's a good moral character, including letters. So shout out to my boy Carlos. I've been knowing him for years. He was able to put a letter together. Uh, Sammy and uh, my sister and different people, they were able to do letters saying that even though I got in trouble, uh, I I'm, I am a good citizen. I, I do the things that I needed to do. So all that was put together and then sent out. And it takes a long time. You have to be real patient with immigration. It does take a long time to review. And that's just part of the process. You just have to allow the process to go through. Um, if you get an attorney, then they will be able to keep you updated. If they're a really good one, hope, um Real, real happy and super, 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 super content and super happy that the the firm that I went to, which is Chavez and Valco, they were able to keep me updated the entire step. So I was never like in, in the dark about what's going on. I knew it was going to take some time. I, you are able to, once you put your application to register to the uh website so that way they um, for the immigration so they can keep you updated and then you usually get emails letting you know what's going on so it takes a minute it takes a long time for everything to get done you got to get biometrics done again you got to get another background check and that's just all part of the, the things that need to happen and then after that the next step after you do all that you have to again they submit the package and everything so you also have to do the interview and the test there's a hundred questions that you have to memorize, pretty much all of them, because they ask you at this point in time, as of the recording of right now, it's only 10 questions that they ask. You have to get seven right. So you literally have to learn the 100, whether you want it or not. But you have to get seven out of 10. Um, it was a good thing for me that I like audio. So whenever I go to the gym, I used to, they have it online. The citizenship test, that's how I got to kind of learn mine. I just put it in as I work out and I repeat back. A lot of the ones I kind of remember from school, some of them I just didn't and I learned. And then I had my interview. Uh, they ask you questions. They check how well you speak. If you're able to write the language, they ask you the questions. And I got it out. Now, in my process, because of the things that I had happened, there's a few things that I needed to provide. So mine, even though the interview, usually what happens is, you do your interview, and then they tell you you're good, and then they're going to have the old ceremony. For mine, it's a little different because I had a few things that I needed to provide in addition to because of what I had happened before. It wasn't a big deal, but it it shouldn't, it shouldn't have happened if I was acting right, but I had to do what I had to do. I accept responsibility for my actions, so I was ready. We were good, and then... Out of the blue came the old ceremony that, uh, yeah, to go uh, go and, uh, you know, you do, do your oath and, you know, you raise your hand, they give you the things, they give you a briefing of everything that you, you need to do and certain things that you need to, you know, complete, you know, register to vote, uh, passport and different things like that. So, yeah, um, highly recommend for you to, if, again, if you already met the residency um, as far as the timing that you needed to be to file, go ahead. Um, 
find a way to get the money and 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 start beginning. If you're able to do it by yourself, I, I believe it's fairly easy. I just knew that it, for mine, I I was gonna need extra help because I got myself in, in a predicament, and it it was a it was a great moment whenever I was able to do it because I, I really owed it to my parents, my especially my dad and my mom because they worked so hard, they worked so hard to to get us. Uh, to be residents and be, become legal and be able to work to for my immaturity and all me my fault uh, I put that in jeopardy and I wasn't going to be good okay uh, because anything it could have been anything you know I could have had a little bit of a weak moment and before you know it I could have easily lost it I uh, think thank God that I was good <laughs> that nothing happened that I was able to be done and now is 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 a done deal. I'm a I'm a U.S. citizen, and I'm very happy. I felt emotional at that time, and I felt relieved, and I felt good that I was able to uh, show my dad my certificate that I was good. Uh, he didn't have to say much. I just wanted to, sh to show it to him to let him know that I uh, that I wasn't all his hard work, the hours, the money, and everything that he had to. Uh, he had to break his back to get the money and borrow money, whatever the he had to do to get us. I wasn't going to mess it up and throw it out the window. I really owe it to him and my mom to do that because both of them work really hard for that. And I wasn't going to just throw it out because it is possible for you to be a permanent resident and be uh, take taking that privilege away and you'll be back in wherever country you're from, not only Mexico. For me, it would have been Mexico, but it could be any country. Any country in the world, if you don't act right, so you really do have to take care of your permanent residency once you have it, or whatever it is. Uh, don't take it for granted. I know if you're young and listening to this, it might seem like you don't know nothing. Okay, I understand that. I know where you're coming from because I was in the same position when I was young. That's the reason why I got myself in trouble and, and cost me thousands of dollars to get myself right. Even though I took care of it, I took care of all my fees and everything else. At the end of the day, it would have been a whole lot easier. Probably who would have more money to invest if I didn't get put myself in that predicament. And yeah, so that's kind of, that's pretty much my journey as far as my citizenship, uh, how I came to got it, uh, how I came to get it. Everybody's journey is different. When I was doing my oath and I was telling my dad about the ceremony, there is people from all over the world, not just Hispanics and Latinos. There's people from all over. There's people from Asia. There was people from Africa. There was people from Europe, uh, South America, um, all over the spectrum of the world. Every single ethnicity, every single day is present. It was present there, and uh, it tripped me out because that's that's what it really is all about, right? I mean, some of these things sometimes they discuss on the news, but sometimes they don't show how diverse. Those ceremonies are, it's just not Latinos. It's a bunch of different people that are there. And it's free, it's beautiful to see that it's not just, that we are, th this is what the country, the US, United States, now I'm not going to say America, because America to me is not only the U.S., but down there. The U.S. has all kinds of different ethnicities and all kinds of different backgrounds. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of you can see it right there—the big melting pot in, in that oath ceremony of so many people that are there, and it's beautiful to me. I think it's awesome that people are able to to strive to to pursue the American dream, and you know, to me, I feel this a step in that direction. So, yeah, uh, I encourage you to to uh, once again, I can't stop stressing it enough to take care of your of your permanent residency and. Once you met the expectation, you know, start beginning to see in the process. It's not super hard. The test is very easy. Some of the things you do have to arrange to do appointments, but it's just, it's not really super hard at all whatsoever, especially if you don't get in trouble prior to, because you don't have any concerns. All you got to do is file the paperwork, and that's pretty much it. Now, uh, I am, as I mentioned earlier, I am going to have a firm to come and talk to us about not only citizenship and, and my experience, but also talk about immigration. If, if, if for whatever reason you're listening and your status is not uh, legal, then you know what are the options? Where do you start? All the uncertainty that people don't know where to start. I still say it to this day. You don't, you fear what you don't know. Like 
if you don't start asking questions, if you don't start informing yourself of what is the first step, where to even go to, then we're going to talk about all that so that you are able to know exactly where you need to go and how to even begin the process of talking to somebody. Uh, so that way you can, you know, it, it's a peace of mind. It really is. Now I'm, 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 I'm always been in peace, but there's always this back in the mind that like you're still a permanent resident. You're not fully any time. It could be taken away if you something happens. So now, like, even though I sleep well, I can really <laughs> sleep extra well for the same reason that I'm good. I am freaking good now, and I'm truly, truly blessed. Uh, to to be able to have completed that journey of my life and and do that, and I registered to vote immediately, and I'm gonna exercise my 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 duties as far as a citizen whenever the time comes, uh, because uh, yeah, it's, it's part of the things that we have to do. I have my little pocket of my constitution, so I'm, it's not that big actually. So I'm gonna fully read it. So uh, even though uh, you know things that they go through in school, but sometimes you don't really bother to think about it. Now I am. Probably gonna invest more time in knowing, knowing about the Constitution, just reading it and having it with me, so I can better fully understand. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comment. I'm probably gonna put some TikToks about this. Uh, but if you want to, you know, ask me questions, what of my experience? Again, I'm not, but be on the lookout that we are gonna have an expert come and talk about the matter. So that way you'll know where you need to go, what you need to do, where you even begin. Uh, so that way it can be done and you can be good to go. And then we you can continue to pursue your American dream. Um, so, yeah, whatever it is that you're doing, keep it up. Do good things and good things will happen. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really wanted to share this piece. I know it's different content than what we usually do. But I felt, as I mentioned, that hopefully it can motivate or or somebody that listens to it can be oh man I, i've been thinking about it but i don't know okay well hopefully you're able to know that it's not super hard and you can get it done yourself or you can reach out for help but you know it's it's a, it's a i don't know it's a feeling it's a feeling to know that you're you're an american citizen now and you're in, i know sometimes they feel like they're selling it to you to be in the countries but i really feel that it is a it's a great country it's a great country to live in it's a beautiful country it's got we got freedoms that we don't really realize and take for granted. Sometimes we are a little shelter, uh, shelter, and kind of also naive now. But we do have to expand our minds as far as everything else that it is in the world. We have to be open minded about everything else. But it, it's so, so so peacefully here. Everything's so easy here to do, pretty much. So, yeah, definitely have to enjoy it. So, this was another episode of the Global Latin Factor. Okay, remember subscribe, go like, and go comment. We will have more content for you. Go visit the website if you want some merchandise. Go pick you up. We don't have the cup there, but, you know, we can definitely put a link to a cup if you would like one of these beautiful cups. And again, once again, this is another episode of the Global Latin Factor podcast. Remember, we are just like you with the spice in this melting pot that it is the world. Until next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. If you are enjoying the content and the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers so we can bring you more episodes, more channel. Go like, go subscribe, go write a comment. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Pero but in fact it's a flamingo Coming to Havana and from Puerto Rico On a pirate ship, you don't know where do we go The birds of the jungle chasing fortune and...